and welcome to a new episode of Patient Pulse. This month, we're very lucky to welcome Tara Lech. She's a pharmacist and the thrombosis program manager at Leahy Hospital Medical Center in Burlington, Massachusetts. And she's also our pharmacy advisor for NATF's Medical Advisory Board. Today, she'll be discussing the patient's guide to DOAC, direct oral anticoagulant reversal. So thank you so much for joining us, Tara. Take it away. Thank you for having me. I have nothing to disclose. So let's go ahead and review the program objectives for today. The hope is that by the end of this program, you'll be able to distinguish between different types of bleeds, identify when reversal agents would be indicated for a direct oral anticoagulant, which we will now refer to as a DOAC associated bleeding. We will describe how the different reversal agents work, and we will discuss the risks and benefits associated with DOAC-associated reversal. So I always like to pave the way by giving a brief overview of the anticoagulants that have been available to us over the years. The important thing to note here is that prior to 2010, if you had any embolic event like a pulmonary embolism, a deep vein thrombosis, or a stroke, you were either admitted for a heparin drip or you may have been sent home with a Lovenox bridge to warfarin. These historical agents are a lot more cumbersome to use as far as dosing is concerned, but it is important to note that they have dedicated reversal agents, and this can make patients and providers feel a lot more comfortable when it comes to how they would be managed in the event of a major bleed. Heparin and anoxaparin can be reversed with a medication known as protamine, and the effects of warfarin can quickly be reversed by giving vitamin K, or by repleting clotting factors with fresh frozen plasma or prothrombin complex citrate, otherwise known as PCC, which we will talk about later on in this presentation. As far as the DOACs go, we have started using them as early as 2010, but it's important to note that it wasn't until 2015 that we actually started having specific agents for reversing these medications as well. While this seems crazy that we use the drugs for almost five to eight years without a reversal agent, we actually have done fairly well, even though we didn't have these agents available. And that is due in large part to the quick onset, offset, and good safety profile of these medications. Unlike the effects of warfarin, which can take five to seven days to wear off, the therapeutic effect of DOAX are typically reversed within one to two days if someone stops taking those drugs, which is why compliance is so important when you're on these meds to treat an embolic event. But this is why many of these bleeds can be managed outside of the hospital just simply by holding a few doses of medication and possibly taking some supportive care measures. It's important to note that all of these drugs are impacted by the kidneys and that the factor 10A inhibitors are all metabolized by the liver. This means that if you develop kidney or liver problems, these medications are going to take a little bit longer than that typical one to two days to clear out of your system. Now, when I say that these drugs have done fairly well, I mean it. We don't typically see an overwhelming number of major bleeds in patients on these medications. Looking at the incidence of DOAC-associated bleeding, the number is relatively low when you compare it to patients simply on aspirin or on no anticoagulation at all. The risk of bleed goes up when you start combining your DOAC with other medications, so antiplatelet medications like aspirin, clopidogrel, Ticagrelor, Prazogrel, when you use those in combination with medications like apixaban, rivaroxaban, or dabigatran, or adoxaban, are going to have a significant impact and almost double or triple your risk of having a bleed while on anticoagulation. So it's always important to discuss your other medications with your physician, with your healthcare provider, with your pharmacist at each visit to make sure that everything that you're taking is still appropriate and safe to be used in combination. It's also important that you're aware of your potential risk factors for bleeding other than simply being on a blood thinner. And other risk factors for bleeding may include advanced age, typically patients over the age of 75 have a higher risk of bleed. Drug interactions are also huge. So we talked about use of antiplatelet medications, but also over-the-counter meds can be just as unsafe. So medications like NSAIDs, so that would be your ibuprofen or naproxen, can also increase your risk of having a bleed, especially a gastrointestinal or GI bleed. 
some other medications that you might take for arrhythmias or infections or for seizures or psychological disorders can also have major drug interactions with some of these DOAX. So it's always important to have your medication list screened regularly to make sure that nothing on your list is going to increase the concentration of your anticoagulant, which would mean that it's raising the level of the blood thinner in your body and could therefore increase your risk of having a bleed. You should also have your labs checked at least annually just to make sure that your liver and your kidney are functioning properly. Anemia is another risk factor for bleeding, as well as cancer and a history of a prior bleed. It's also important to note that not all bleeds are created equal, and the majority of them do not require full and immediate reversal of anticoagulation. Most patients on long-term anticoagulation will experience a non-major or minor bleeding event at some point in their life. These bleeds can typically be managed at home with basic supportive care, and they include things like nose bleeds, gum bleeds, and skin scrapes. Major bleeds, on the other hand, are typically uncontrolled and unable to be managed at home. You may start to feel lightheaded or dizzy due to loss of blood, and you should seek help immediately as this type of bleeding is likely to affect the proper functioning of your major organs and can even be life-threatening. Now, when we talk about supportive care for these non-major bleeds, what we're talking about are measures like holding one or more doses of your medication, let the anticoagulant effect wear off so that your body can start to form clots a little more easily. They may also need you to apply a bandage or pressure to the spot of bleeding. Sometimes it may include minor stitches just to close the gap in your skin, or we may ask you to apply a topical adhesive hemostatic spray that you can get over the counter. And those are just sprays that help form a layer of protection over your skin or the open wound to help the body start to form a clot and stop the bleed. And then for people that do need a reversal agent, patients that present with a major bleeding event to the hospital, it's important to know the criteria for when you would actually be a candidate for a reversal. So that is generally reserved for patients who are actively taking their DOAC, who present with either evidence of a major bleed, which would include things like bleeding into a critical site, like your head, your heart, your lungs, your eyes, your kidneys. If your blood pressure were to become unstable or you're having arrhythmias and your heart rate is difficult to control, overt bleeding that may lead to a drop in your blood counts. So your doctor might say something like your hemoglobin has dropped two or more grams per deciliter, or someone may suggest that you need a blood transfusion. Those things would all be evidence of a major bleed. And in those cases, we may need to reverse your anticoagulant effect more quickly than the effect of just wearing off over a couple of days. And then if you were to need emergency surgery, that would also be another indication to reverse the therapeutic effect of your anticoagulant so that we can safely take you to surgery. It's also important to know what options we have for reversal. So if you're experiencing a major bleed and you're actively taking your DOAC, they may ask you if you're awake, when did you last take your medication? A lot of times, if you had just taken the pill within two hours, they may want to give you what's known as activated charcoal. It's taken by mouth. And what it does is it helps bind to and neutralize the effect of the active drug that you had just taken. If you present later than two hours from the time you last took your dose, then that's not an option and we would not give you the activated charcoal. For dabigatran, you can see hemodialysis listed there. That's not really used in an acute setting because it takes a long time to set up a hemodialysis machine. But basically what that does is it takes over for the function of your kidneys and helps get that medication out of your system and helps get your body back to its normal coagulation status. In most cases, when it comes to immediate reversal, we're going to be looking for specific agents to use to bind to or reverse the effects of those medications. So for dabigatran, the direct thrombin inhibitor, we actually have a very specific agent called idarocizumab or proxbind that will specifically bind to and reverse the effects of dabigatran. And then if you're on a factor 10A inhibitor, so a pixaban, rivaroxaban, or a doxaban, we have two options. So K-Centra, which is that four-factor prothrombin complex citrate that we talked about a little bit earlier that we have studied and do actively use to reverse warfarin bleeds, or the newer agent that came out just a couple of years ago, endexinate alpha, which is otherwise known as endexa. So we're going to start by talking about the reversal of the direct thrombin inhibitor, dabigatran. 
Idarizizumab, otherwise known as Proxbind, is the only FDA-approved agent for reversal of dabigatran, and it is approved specifically for use in times when there is either need for emergency surgery or urgent procedures or for a life-threatening or uncontrolled bleed. When idarizumab is present, dabigatran will preferentially have a greater attraction to the antibody, the reversal agent, than it would to thrombin, which is normally how it would work in your body. So you can see here, this is just a brief overview of the clotting cascade, and these are all of the different clotting factors that are working in your body to help you form clots when you need to. And you can see that dabigatran is actually working on that thrombin factor 2A, and when it inhibits thrombin, it prevents you from forming a clot, which is what makes the bleeds a little bit more serious. And for those of you that are a little more visual, you can see here that when dabigatran is bound to thrombin, it prevents the conversion to fibrin and prevents the formation of a clot. But then when these little idarizumab molecules come on the scene, the dabigatran will jump ship. It wants to bind to the idarizumab, and then that frees up your thrombin to go ahead and tell the fibrin to start forming and actually making these bound clots and help stop the bleeding and help your body get back to its normal hemostasis or its normal ability to form clots. So like we said, idarizumab binds and rapidly neutralizes the anticoagulant effect of dabigatran. The dose is five grams and it's given intravenously. The good news is that it starts working within minutes and hemostasis, which is your body's normal ability to form clots, is typically achieved within hours. The other good news is that it's relatively cheap. The estimated cost for one dose is about $3,500. And we say that it's cheap because some of the other products that we're going to talk about later can cost upwards of thirty dollars to $50,000 just for one dose of medication. Now we will discuss the reversal of factor 10A inhibitors, so apixaban, rivaroxaban, and adoxaban. As it stands right now, there are two options for reversal of these agents. The first is four-factor PCC, otherwise known as Kcentra. It's important to note that this is not FDA approved for DOAC reversal. It is a nonspecific reversal agent. The mechanism of action or how it works to reverse a DOAC-related bleed is largely unknown, and it is significantly cheaper than the alternative, which is indexinet alpha. So indexinet is the FDA approved drug for the reversal of apixaban and rivaroxaban just because of how it was studied. There were so few patients on adoxaban in that trial that they weren't able to get approval. So use for the reversal of adoxaban is actually off label. As far as how this drug works, it acts as a decoy. So it goes into the system and looks like factor 10A And instead of the apixaban, rivaroxaban, or adoxaban binding to your body's factor 10A, it's going to bind to this decoy instead. And then that decoy will sequester those drugs and hopefully neutralize their anticoagulant effect. And the con here is that it's very expensive. Factor 4 PCC, otherwise known as Kcentra, is a blood product. It contains non-activated clotting factors along with protein C, S, and heparin. And because it contains heparin, it would be contraindicated for use if you had a history of heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. So that's important to know. If you have an allergy to heparin, then this reversal agent is not for you. And the thought or the proposed mechanism for DOAC reversal is that when we use it, when we give back all of these clotting factors, it will overwhelm that clotting cascade which you see here, and help the body start to overcompensate for the effects of these drugs and eventually overwhelm that system and have your body start producing its own thrombin and fibrin again so that you will eventually start forming clots as the effects of the apixaban, rivaroxaban, or adoxaban naturally wear out of your system. Other things to note about four-factor PCC is that the dose will vary depending on your hospital's protocol. Some use weight-based dosing, and others use a fixed dose of 2,000 units. Efficacy of this drug is still being determined. There are currently no good prospective randomized trials, but looking back at old data, we do see that when we've used this as an intervention for DOAC reversal, it actually does work pretty well and seems to work as well as the other agents that are FDA-approved and available. 
many centers currently only carry four-factor PCC and use this as their primary reversal agent for DOAC-associated bleeding. And so while we never advocate for use of an agent based on cost alone, it would be a good alternative if it does continue to show that the clinical outcomes are similar to those that we are seeing in the indexinet alpha trials. Now let's discuss indexinet alpha in a little more detail. As we said earlier, it acts as a decoy to bind to and sequester factor 10A inhibitors, and this would then neutralize the anticoagulant effect. It works rapidly, and the effects on factor 10A were seen to last for up to about two hours after the infusion. As you can see here, the indexa molecules are made to look like factor 10A, but they're missing a little side chain that would allow them to activate. So when indexa is given, it now provides your anticoagulant with a neutral alternative site to bind to. This leaves the factor 10A free and able to work to produce thrombin and fibrin that would ultimately help restore hemostasis and your body's ability to clot. Looking at the dosing of indexinet, you see that things start to get a little complex. A lot of the dosing depends on what dose of anticoagulant you are on and when you took your last dose of your medication. This is why pocket cards are so vital when you're on a blood thinner. If you were ever found down and unconscious and brought to the hospital, it would be great if you had a list of your active medications in your purse or wallet, or some patients even choose to wear a bracelet indicating that they're on a blood thinner. Regardless, the healthcare team will work quickly to assess your dose, your medication, and the time you last took your medication so that we can initiate treatment. If you were found down, if the last dose was unknown, the drug manufacturers actually do account for that, and we do would be able to still give you a dose, even if we don't actually know the correct time that you took your last dose of medication. And the one thing that everyone always worries about is how much do these agents cost? And the truth is that indexinet alpha is by far the priciest option and its lack of superior outcomes compared to standard of care have made some institutions choose to continue to use four-factor PCC to reverse DOAC associated bleeding. While you don't pay directly for these medications, the cost may impact your out-of-pocket costs as well as the amount of money that the hospital will be reimbursed for your admission. The important thing to remember is that these agents all work well to reverse your anticoagulation and stop your bleeding. Each hospital has its own guideline and clinical pathway for anticoagulation reversal, and they will follow that if the need should ever arise. It is good to know that we have reversal agents out there. We know that we can minimize the bleed, that we can stop it sooner. And that's if you're in a spot where these agents are readily available. Like I said, not all hospitals carry these agents. Some of the more rural centers may be harder to get to. So time to presentation is key and time to reversal agent is key. There's also that concern that if you were to have a major bleed and can't go back on your blood thinner for a prolonged period of time, that you would be at risk of another event. We always will stress low impact activities, but it is always good to have a plan in place when you are doing some of the more risky activities. Keep close communication with your treatment team so that they know what your lifestyle looks like and then make sure you know where you would want to go in the event of an emergency just so that the people around you know the plan should they need to take you to get medical attention. So just some key points as we wrap up. First, The prevention of the bleed is always best. It's important to know your risk factors, modify whenever possible, and try to stay away from unsafe or dangerous activities while you're on your blood thinner. Clotting factor concentrates like Kcentra may be used for DOAC reversal. We're still trying to determine the optimal dose, but it's important to know that so far, the data that we have looked at is showing that this agent is just as effective as other agents are out there. And then specific antidotes like idaricizumab and indexinet alpha do exist. They are considered first line and may assist in the management of life-threatening hemorrhage. So if your institution does carry these products and you present with a major bleed, you would be given these agents to reverse the effects of the anticoagulant and help your body start to form its natural clotting process again. And finally, it's always important to talk about your risk of clot following reversal. Once your anticoagulant effect is gone and neutralized, you may be at risk for another clotting event. So it's always important to have these conversations with your healthcare providers to make sure that you know when it is safe, 
or if it is safe to resume your blood thinner following the bleed. Ultimately, the goal is to keep you safe and it's just important to know that you have options available should an emergency arise. I hope you enjoyed the program and thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Tara. That was such a wonderful, thorough overview. And thanks to all of our listeners. And we will be back next month with another episode of Patient Health.